China has just made another major new discovery about Earth's moon, thanks to a large sample of moon rock that they were able to retrieve with their Chang'e 5 lander in 2020. The new evidence shows us that volcanic activity on the moon was happening much more recently than scientists had previously imagined. The previous assumption was that our moon has been a solid, dead rock in space for at least the past 3 billion years. Those assumptions were made based on radioactive dating of lunar samples collected by both the NASA Apollo missions and the Soviet lunar landers. But the Chinese have been exploring new territory on the moon with Chang'e 5. It collected rock from the Oceanus Procellarum region where new studies show that the volcanic rock formed just 2 billion years ago, meaning there were still volcanoes moving liquid rock to the surface. So our best guess about the moon was wrong by at least a billion years, or maybe more. This opens up some weird possibilities that we'll get into later. And that isn't even the first time this month that we've had to readjust our fundamental assumptions about one of Earth's closest celestial neighbors. We may have gotten the timeline wrong about Mars as well. It's discoveries like these that kind of remind us just how little we actually know about the nature of the space around our Earth, let alone our solar system, our galaxy, or the greater universe that surrounds us. Our comprehension of existence is a single grain of sand on the beach of infinity. It's humbling and at the same time a little bit terrifying as well. So let's talk about that. This is the space race. First off, let's get this out of the way. Yes, the moon had volcanoes on it. I didn't really know about this until fairly recently, so I'll assume that there are still a fairly significant amount of people out there who might be kind of mind blown to hear about moon volcanoes. Even a seemingly dead rock like our moon was in its early history, a fully active body with a super hot core and a layer of molten rock flowing below the surface. The same as what we enjoy right now on the earth. The moon is much smaller, so therefore it cooled down and solidified much faster. Or at least that's what we think. So the reason that this new discovery is rewriting our history of the moon is because China has made the decision to explore this region of the moon called Oceanus Procellarum, which means Ocean of Storms. This 2500 kilometer bed of darkened rock is in the upper left of the moon from our point of view. It is thought to contain nearly 2,000 cubic kilometers of basaltic magma that was spewed onto the surface by a major eruption. And it's an area that was never previously explored by the lunar missions of the 60s and 70s. They just never got around to it. Those old Apollo missions brought back a massive amount of moon rock, nearly 400 kilograms, and based on radioactive dating, it was determined that the youngest rock on the moon's surface formed 3 billion years ago, setting that as the end point for its period of volcanic activity. And for the next 50 years, nobody really visited the moon or tried to learn anything new about it or bring anything else back to Earth for us to study. It's not very far away, the moon is really cool, you would have thought more people would be more curious. So it wasn't until the Chinese space program finally hit their stride that we're finally learning new things about the moon again. In 2020, their second robot lander mission, Chang'e 5, successfully collected about 2 kilograms of rock and dust and handed that off to an automated return probe that airdropped it back to Earth. Keeping your information private and secure is an important everyday challenge these days, which is why we are excited to be working with our new sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all of the information sent between your device and the internet. This keeps your personal data protected from big companies or cyber criminals. Elon Musk has talked a lot about censorship lately, and Surfshark is the perfect tool to bypass censorship and geo restrictions, but it's also super practical for things such as changing your country location so you can access different libraries of streaming services for platforms like Netflix. As Canadians, our Netflix library doesn't quite hold up to our friends in America, so using Surfshark allows us to watch shows we wouldn't have access to otherwise. 
But most important to us is the privacy and security that Surfshark offers. They do this in several ways, such as real-time alerts to protect your identity, the ability to check for potential breaches, and keeping your devices virus-free. With their clean web feature, they'll block ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts. Surfshark helps keep you and your information protected so you can enjoy the internet without worries. We want you to stay protected, so right now, if you use our code SPACE, you will get 83% off, plus three extra months for free. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out. Click the link found in the description or pinned comment to sign up and use Surfshark today. Best of all, Surfshark allows you to use one account on an unlimited number of devices, so you can protect the whole family. And now, let's get back to the video. So, this raises some very interesting questions and some really fun ideas to think about. Firstly, we don't even really know how the moon came to be. You may have seen this new 3D rendering that was created by a number crunching supercomputer. The machine was used to predict the possible outcomes of a range of cosmic scenarios, and this one that resulted in the formation of a moon came from the collision of a young molten Earth with a smaller rogue planet about the size of Mars. The resulting planetary debris from both planets reformed as the Earth and its satellite moon. We don't know if that's true, but it's pretty cool. Our moon is unusually large relative to the size of our planet. It's the fifth largest moon in our solar system, nearly tied for fourth place, and it's only surpassed by the largest moons of Jupiter and Saturn. So we know that something weird happened. As for why this new rock sample is so much younger than what we've seen before, we can look at the elemental composition. The new Chinese samples are much higher in titanium and calcium than the old Apollo moon rocks, and that means that they would melt more easily at a lower temperature. So the researchers who publish this new data at the National University of Singapore believe that the Chang'e 5 magma was produced at a similar depth below the surface as the Apollo rock, but was liquid at a much lower temperature of about 80 degrees Celsius cooler than the Apollo sample. So that would tell us that the lunar mantle, the layer of rock below the surface, likely cooled down by 80 degrees between 3 billion and 2 billion years in the moon's history. The reason that planets and moons have to inevitably cool and solidify is because they use up all of the energy stored in the core of the body that was created during the formation process. There is no source of perpetual energy, not even in the heart of a star. All things must die, or at least change state. So that's left us wondering, what energy source kept the moon so hot for so long? It could have been radioactive elements like uranium and thorium trapped in the moon's interior, but the new samples have so far shown no abundance of those elements. It could have also been the gravitational force of the Earth itself that pumped energy into the moon's interior. We see this same effect take place on Jupiter's moon Io. It's the innermost of Jupiter's Galilean moons and is known as the most volcanically active world in our solar system. The moon is kept alive by the gravitational force of the giant planet that it orbits. Jupiter pumps energy into Io as the gravitational force squeezes the moon like a tennis ball, driving the constant volcanic activity under the rocky surface. It's believed that two billion years ago, the moon would have been much closer to the Earth than it currently is, especially if that planetary collision model holds true. It would have been about halfway closer than it is right now, so the tidal pull of the Earth's gravity would have had a much more significant effect on the interior of the moon. And it's not impossible that there could still be younger regions of the moon to be discovered. One of the methods that researchers use to try and guess the age of a particular area of a planet is something referred to as crater counting. Basically, if you can determine the age of one region, such as Oceanus Procellarum, and matching that to the number of craters that have accumulated over that time, then you can infer that other locations with similar numbers of craters are of a comparable age and areas with a lower number of craters would, by the same logic, be much younger. Harold Heisinger is a planetary scientist at the University of Munster in Germany, and a major contributor to crater counting work. 
He believes that some regions of the moon appear to be just tens of millions of years old. He does concede that this is still highly unlikely, but this very smart dude does think that it's possible. And that would mean the dinosaurs might have looked up into the night sky and seen a volcano exploding on the surface of a much closer moon, and that is pretty trippy. If you needed a reminder that human life is insignificant to the history of the universe, there it is. And it's not just the moon that we might have gotten wrong. Earlier this month, a study by an orbital satellite around Mars showed evidence that there could be an ocean of liquid water underneath the icy surface, and that is being kept in a liquid state by geothermal energy in the planet's interior. Basically, a laser altimeter from the Mars Global Surveyor satellite was used to measure the rise and fall of a polar ice cap on Mars, and they confirmed that it was, in fact, rising and falling with the changes in seasons, which would indicate that it is floating. And what's more, they also detected undulating waves in the movement of the ice caps, which could only be caused by flowing liquid water underneath. And that liquid water could only exist if there was still active geothermal heat coming up from an active molten rock beneath the surface of Mars. Mars is also much smaller than the Earth, and according to our established theories, should have lost its heat and solidified a very, very long time ago. This was widely accepted among pretty much everyone in the science community. Even the more creative minds in planetary research would not have assumed that Mars could still have enough energy left in its core to generate heat. But a very precise laser measure tool from an orbital satellite just told us that it does. And if there is heat and liquid water underneath the surface of Mars, then it's almost a guarantee that there is stuff living down there. It could just be microbial bacteria, or maybe even little crustacean-like things at best, but it could also be an entire subterranean ecosystem with large sentient creatures, like some kind of crab-human hybrid at the top of the food chain. We don't know. And that's kind of the whole point that we're trying to make here. There are still so many things that we just don't know, and it's a bit foolish to walk around thinking that we do. We observe these planets and moons from a distance. We maybe land a little robot and explore an area the size of Manhattan. This kind of science gives us pieces of understanding, but these planets are massive puzzles to solve, and we still have so few pieces to work with. Anyway, there's your cosmic thinking for the day. Did moon volcanoes and dinosaurs exist at the same time? Is there a race of subterranean crab people living on Mars? We don't know enough to rule it out. That's all I'm getting at. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.